Hello, everybody. You've tuned in to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant Rich Myers, with the Indiana State Police Public Information Office. We want to thank the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance, for their continued support of our fine program here. I want to thank Tom Trial behind the camera, putting us on YouTube each and every week. And I want to thank you, the guests, for listening to us each and every week and keeping us going. I've got a uh, special guest here today. He's been here a long time, long time guest, but uh, kind of in a different mode now, doing a different uh, job for the department. So I want to have him back and and talk about his job. Brian, thank you for coming back here. Thanks for having me back, Rich. Sergeant Olai is now a CSI with, is there a certain region or are you out of a certain post now or how does that work? Um, We we are regionalized uh, to spread our resources around because crime happens anywhere in Indiana. (laughs) And Not just in certain areas, because we're pretty smart. If it was only in one area, we'd be there. We'd be there and just stay there, right? Yes. Uh, Sergeant Brian Olai, now a, uh, a, and CSI stands for? Crime Scene Investigator. And it's exactly as we see it on TV, right? Exactly. 42 minutes and we are done. <laughs> we have it solved and we've prosecuted the crimes. <laughs> no, not at all. Exactly. And that's kind of why I wanted to have you in here to talk about this and what people see on, on the TV. But first, let's talk a little bit about your past. How did you get involved with the state police? Where did you start out? At? And this is not your first time being involved in what we would say the investigative side of the, of the uh, department. Yeah, no, it's not my first time. I've been with the department to uh, be 21 years in June of this year. Um, started out up in the northwest part of the state at the Lowell District um, after going to college. And uh, now, are you, are you from Indiana? Uh, no, I'm I'm from Illinois. <laughs> okay, so all right. Um, <laughs> the uh, the the uh, uh, started out at the Lowell District um, on, on road patrol. Spent also a year in investigations in uh, gaming enforcement when that was a state police operation. Right. Um, went back to the road and then got into investigations at the Lowell District and was there for about three and a half years and then uh, um, got into the public information office at the Indiana State Police and was at headquarters for uh, about 10 years or so, a little over. Mm -hmm. And then um, in September of 2015, I went back into an investigative role. Um, It's a little bit different because um, we do have kind of a division of section that is investigations. Right. And uh, that that's that's our detectives. Uh, but now I'm 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 actually working in the lab, um, the state police lab, which is um, a uh, been around for over 75 years. Uh, it's a, we've had right. a lab for a long time, um, have a long history in in um, working with uh, the scientific uh, disciplines, and we've, we've had a lot of advancements that actually have yeah. touched the Indiana the, the world because of the Indiana State Police Lab. I'm sure um, you probably saw an advancement from the time you were detective working previously to now oh yeah no things are definitely changing different i I would say that probably the one tool um that a crime scene investigator uses more than anything else is a camera um so now you think back you know 15 20 years ago you would use your camera you would set up a picture and you would try to document that scene and you would press click and then you know a week later the film would get processed and you'd see what you got and when you push click you Hope that you got what you, you were hope what at. you got, and you hope you had the thing set right because you know we don't use the automatic button, um, and I, I would not want Dean Marks to think that I'm using automatic <laughs> at any point in time when I you know after my completing my training. Um, but the, uh, the 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 nice thing with the digital camera is you can get very high quality photos and you can look at them. And you know I have this um, for for the YouTube viewers. You know it's hold hold it up, click, and then hold it down. You know it's and then you look at it. You right. look at your pictures. So you have, you know, if it, it, you can immediately see if you captured it, if it was too dark, if it was out of focus, um, if any, anything was wrong with the photo, and then you can adjust it and, and fix it and get a good quality photo to document your scene. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about composition of our scenes and, and our photographs and um, really just trying to document the scene as it was, as we found it when we got to a scene. Well, let's back up here a little bit. When you when you applied for this position uh, and were successful in, in getting that position, where does your training take place? Is that in house, or do you go somewhere else, or how's that work? There's a couple of ways that that generally happens. We do, you know, because we have so many investigators that are crime scene investigators, and we have the lab. Um, we can do a lot of that training in house. Um, there is also a crime scene investigator school that is uh, a four week very intense school that is put on through the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. That school was actually started kind of through the Indiana State Police, and it was kind of adopted by the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy. And the Indiana State Police is very involved in it, and several of our people are the the day-to-day staff instructors. They're there every day for the school. Um, and then the, the academy provides kind of a lead uh, administrator that 
plans the course and gets the, you know, sets the timeline and the schedule. Um, but a lot of the people that come in and, and present are people from the Indiana State Police Lab. But we also have people who are experts in their field. Um, for example, Dr. Neil Haskell, who um, is at St. Joe College, and he is a world known expert on entomology and determining date and time of death because okay. of the stages of flies uh, on, on a body. Right. Um, so uh, he's kind of known as a bug doctor, he, right? He's the bug doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, uh, then we had people from um, in the University of Indianapolis who came out and talked about um, you know finding bones and, and reconstruction of crime scenes uh, or bodies maybe that have been out um, for for weeks um, or months in in the um, in, in the backwoods of Indiana and they're found and how we how we go and document that scene and make sure we don't miss something because. You know, it's Indiana, so out in the wild, it's right. very possible that there's going to be an animal that might get into it and might move things around and, and rifle through a, uh, a scene, and you want to try to find all of the information because, um, you know, and that's 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 probably, we, we want to document the scene and we want to get information, and, and, and really the, the role of the crime scene investigator is not to convict someone, it's to be a truth finder and a fact finder, and that's that's what we do, and, um, you know, that's one of the things we really learn in, in, in crime scene investigation is, if if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, don't go in thinking it's a duck. Right. Yeah. You, you know, we have a process and a procedure that is very de- detailed, very documented of how we operate and what we do. And we don't we don't use preconceived notions. We, we, we look at the facts and we document the scene. And, you know, if, if the things don't support it, then we, we move on from there and try to figure out what did or didn't happen. And. Well, I'm sure you have to go in and you have almost like a uh, running a running a suspected uh, drunk on a breathalyzer. You have a form, you have a desired way that you have to do this method of operation. Very, very procedure procedure driven, um, very operationally sound practices that allow us to do our job in a very systematic and professional manner. Um, you know, and those that's how we operate. I mean, it's it's you know, and you whether it's um, you know, a stolen vehicle that's recovered and we process it or whether it's a burglary or whether it's a homicide scene, you know, we kind of do the same steps, um, you know, maybe some of them to different extents, but we do the same things and we treat them all kind of the same as this is the process, this is a procedure and we know it works. Um, And one thing that we have in place uh, with the Indiana State Police Lab is we have some officers who are experienced and and, um, very long time crime scene investigators and they are actually their full time job is quality assurance, and they check our work. Mm-hmm. Um, so we 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 have a computer system. We upload our information, and they can look at it and say, you know, did you do this? Yes, N- no, and here's why I didn't do it. Or um, they can look at it and say, you know, you might want to after the fact look at this also. Right. Um, so that you know that it's it's really good to have that quality of. Um, people looking over your shoulder and the, the experience that they have to make sure that we're always doing the right things in the right way at the right time for the right reason. Now you were talking uh, before about the camera being one of the most important things that you use on there. I know uh, when I came out the old uh, Pentax K1000. Yeah. That was pretty much a standby. I, that's what I had I think until you know <laughs> until I got this job. <laughs> <laughs> the digital but I understand also and uh, speak about this if you know maybe not that there's a whole Prethra of something that the lab has that they can actually set up a scene and have a 3D movement of that. Yeah, we, scene. we do have we do have the the ability to document scenes 3D, um, and they will do scale diagrams, and the computers do a lot of those things. And it's it's very similar to crash reconstruction of a, of a vehicle accident. Um, a lot of the same stuff uh, is used, and a lot of the same systems. And and actually, sometimes some of our uh, crime scene investigators go out to serious fatal crashes to be able to document this scene. Um, it, we, we do have that capability, um, but at the same time, we, we still draw diagrams and we still measure the old-fashioned way because sometimes you just have to do those things. Um, even if even if you go into a, a, a scene and you use really highly technical stuff to document it and right. map it, and you still need to draw even a rough sketch by hand just, yeah. you know, because... Refresh it, your memory when you go Refresh your memory when you go to court. Refresh your memory when you're writing reports and, and documenting things and making notes. Well, again, we're listening to uh, Sergeant Brian Oli with the uh, Indiana State Police Laboratory CSI Division. And Brian's uh, been there about a year now. Is that a little more than a year or around a year? No, uh, uh, September of 2015, and we're in May now. So, okay. um, you know, nine nine months or so. 
And it's uh, brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. Brian, do you still find that we get a lot of requests from uh, smaller departments and county departments, city departments for our, our CSI? Because it's quite the expense to have somebody be able to do that and train to that level, isn't it? Uh, the, the, the training isn't isn't free. It, it's not cheap, and you're paying for somebody to be able to do these things. But I would say probably the equipment is probably the biggest expense. Okay. Um, you know, I have a I, I drive a van now. I don't drive a Charger or a Crown Victoria. Right. Um, I drive a big big van, and some of our guys have um, pickup trucks that are uh, have large toppers and some 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 things inside the back of the truck for. Uh, transporting our equipment. So we do have a lot of equipment. Um, but I would say um, probably about 80% of the work that I get called to, maybe even a little higher than that, is not the Indiana State Police's cases. Right. Um, most of it is other agencies. And there are a lot of agencies out there that have their own CSIs. Um, several agencies do, but a lot of times they may only have one CSI on an agency of, you know, 30 or 40 people. And if he's on vacation, they'll call us. Um, or if it's a very serious scene, um, you know, a crime scene can take anywhere from, you know, a couple of hours to a couple of days to document Mm -hmm. and, and maybe even longer depending on, on what it is or how catastrophic it is. Um, so the, the, there's a lot of times we get and we go and we may assist an agency. I mean, I've been at scenes where we've had two crime scene investigators from our agency, from the Indiana State Police, and another crime scene investigator from that agency. Right. Um, but a lot of times those other agencies that um, don't have the resources that the state police has, that investigator is wearing multiple hats. He may also be in a, a, a detective who has been through the school and is capable and certified as a crime scene investigator, but he's going to have to re- wear other hats. And so to take the time to do and document a scene like that, he needs to spend that time doing investigations too. So we're, we, we do a lot of uh, work for other agencies, a lot of sheriff's departments, small town agencies, but most of the large agencies are going to have somebody, but still we get called sometimes to assist them. What's your court time? What do you, how much time do you spend in court? Uh, Talking and testifying on what you found at the crime scene. Um, it, 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 that's, you know, I've been doing this about nine months. So, you know, as the wheels of justice turn right. slowly, I haven't been to court a whole lot on crime scene investigation, um, things that I've done since I've taken this job. But if but you I mean, do your might, job right again, you're probably not going to be there. That's, that's correct. I mean, and that's the same thing, uh, with a detective, with a police officer, right. whatever it is. If you know, if you document things correctly and, and, and accurately and portray a, a, a clear and accurate picture of the incident, um, that does reduce your court time. Yeah. Um, so the amount of court time I would say though is depends on the, it's very dependent upon what the case is. Um, what the facts were and how things operated and, and, and what the scene was. Um, because um, a very simple scene, you know, they may not even bring the crime right. scene investigator yeah. in. They'll have the detective talk about it because the detective is going to be able to talk about the photographs that I take and say, is this a clear and accurate depiction of the scene as you found it? And he's going to say yes. And that's laid a clear a clear foundation for, 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 um, for the jury and for the judge and for the court system. What is your area of responsibility? How much do you have to um, take care of? I have... I have uh, primarily primarily right. assigned to me. I have four counties kind of in West Central Indiana. Um, I work in uh, Tippecanoe County, uh, White County, Carroll County, and Clinton County as my primary areas. Um, I do go into other areas and we, you know, we back each other up. Obviously. Exactly. I mean, we, we take vacations, we have some time away. Um, so we, we cover each other um, or we'll go and assist each other as well. Well, we're down about a minute and a half left here on the on speaking with Brian Oli from the Indiana State Police uh, Crime Scene Investigative as part of what he's doing now. And uh, one thing that I was curious about, when you go to testify in court, uh, how do you remember all this? Um, it's those really it, the photographs that you take. Um, we take lots of pictures. I mean, it's not uncommon for me to go to a, a common residential burglary and take three or four hundred photographs. Is that right? Um, and then you, field notes, which is uh, you know, again, we talked about that procedure. We have a very detailed form that we run through that kind of lists everything that you could kind of do and you kind of check off and you make notes and then you know you're making notes as you walk and as you talk and through a scene and then you kind of take those things back and then you'll kind of type those notes up you again and add to it's them it's kind of like going to court for traffic it's boom it comes back to you yeah and it does a little bit um you know it's, it's odd how you can remember somebody from you know yeah. for you spent two minutes with somebody six months ago and comes back yeah. to you well, again, this has been the Indiana State Police Roadshow brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance. Cops are Kids, a subsidiary of the Indiana State Police Alliance. I want to thank Brian for coming in. Thanks for having thank me, you Rich. for uh, 
anytime. Come on back and come down to Southern Indiana. The Southern Indiana. I don't want to do that. <laughs> For you. <laughs> Roadshow. We'll, we'll talk to you next week. Roadshow out.